Greetings, drawers, and welcome back. Uh, today we will be continuing our discussion on structure. Uh, I'm going to dig in a little bit more on the proportions uh, and uh, include this week uh, the, the legs. All right, so uh, today we'll be working with Shaman. Shaman, hi. All right, um, uh, let's get started by, uh, by reviewing some of the proportions that we talked about last week. All right, uh, so the overall proportions of the body, the system that I use is a seven and a half head system. All right, so there's a, a long-standing debate in, uh, in art history as to whether we're eight heads high or seven and a half head, heads high. There are, of course, uh, also um, exaggerated forms where they're talking about fashion models, which can be nine to ten uh, heads high in fashion drawing, or we're talking about heroic drawing uh, or, or heroic proportions, which can be sometimes nine heads high, which makes the head actually smaller in relationship to the body. Uh, but the most naturalistic of all of, of the proportion systems is the seven and a half head system, right? So that's the one that we're going to use, right? And basically what it requires is first to understand the, proportion, the torso and then to relate the torso to the legs, okay? So let's review a little bit what we went over last week, uh, which is the proportions of the torso. So the torso, which goes from the top of our head, right, the top of our head to the bottom of the groin. All right, uh, Shaka, you can turn around. Yeah. Right. The bottom of the, uh, on the back, it goes from the top of the head to uh, the gluteal fold. So this is the gluteal fold. It's that little sort of part uh, on the bottom. That part is particularly important to us because it's a really good measuring point for the legs. All right, come back over. So when we divide that up, we're going to go four heads, right, for the entire torso. Right? The, the first head is, is obviously the head. Right? It's from the top of the head to the bottom of her chin, right? which with our COVID masks on, is very easy to see. Right? We don't, you know, if we have, a, if we have a, a model that has a beard, for example, which Chandra does not, right? if you have a model that has a beard, uh, you have to be able to see through that. When we, t when we look at the back side of the head, you still have to have an understanding. There are, there are certain positions where you won't be able to see the whole head, but we still have to be sort of understanding what that is. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, actually, let me, let me back up for a second before we dig into this, because I want to say one more thing about proportions that's particularly important. Right? Proportions are a system that helps us to, uh, to understand and to, uh, um, to organize the, the body so that we can draw it, whatever. Right? They are not about uh, an idealized set of, uh, of standards, right? So everybody's proportions are basically the same. So when I'm saying that we're all seven and a half heads high, it doesn't matter if your ancestors are from Central Africa or from the Arctic Circle, right? We all sort of share this common set of proportions, but each one of us is a little bit individual. So even though we might be saying that a proportion, none of us are gonna fit into it exactly perfectly. We're using it as a guide. So sometimes some of the proportions might be a little bit off. So for example, even in, within, an in, in, within an individual, uh, if I'm saying that she's four heads high right now, could you compress a little bit like this and put your chin down, right? right? When she goes like this, all of a sudden she is not full up four heads from the groin to the top of her head anymore because she's compressing, right? So we're only in this sort of system when we're standing in that, that, uh, um, that anatomical position, right? right? So the first head is from, the, is from the, the top of the head to the bottom of the chin, right? Not to be confused with the face, okay? So the face is from the bottom of the chin to the hairline. The second head is from the bottom of the chin when it's upright the way hers is right now, right, to the fifth rib. Now we talked last week that on the man figure, the fifth rib, it, um, uh, the nipple sits on the fifth rib. Right? On a female figure, depending on the individual, right, that may or may not be the case. Right? But we still would understand that. Right? The, the nipple on the female figure can sometimes be a good measuring point, but sometimes it can't be. Right? Because uh, of the nature of the, of the breast and the heaviness of it, Right? It can move, so uh, if she leans over, like something like that or something, uh, the breast is gonna move and that measuring point is gonna move. So be careful measuring from that. Instead, seek to understand where you think the, uh, the fifth rib is, right? right? The next one goes down to the navel, right? From the, uh, the fifth rib to the navel, right? So the navel, again, another one that can 
um, when, you know, depending on who we are or how we're moving on. Right? I, I described last week that Santa Claus, his navel was going to sit way out here. Right? Maybe not a great thing to measure. Right? Right? And then the, the last head goes from the navel down to the, uh, um, down to the bottom of the groin. Can I spin you around again? When we look on the back side, now here's what I was talking about before. Right? On the back side, it's, it's difficult for you to see where, um, where her chin is. Right? And it's also pretty difficult for us to see where her, uh, um, uh, the, the head mark would be, which is the seventh cerv cervical vertebrae right here. Right? So it sits about here. So that C7, if you feel on yourself, you'll know, feel that little bump on the back. Did you actually touch that bump? Yeah. Right? So it's kind of right about, right about there. That's approximately where that head measurement would be. Now sometimes, can I actually, can you turn your head just a little bit towards me? Right? Sometimes in a pose, we can still catch that chin there, right? and that's gonna be a little bit better, but that is not always the case. Okay? The next one is gonna go from that C7 vertebrae approximately to the bottom of the scapula. Could you just move your arm kind of like, right? right? So here as, we, as she's coming around, uh, let's go up a little bit. Right? There's the bottom of the scapula. See how you can see it here? Right? On this side, it's right, right there. So I'm going to slowly bring them back down. Right? There, see how you see it? Right? This is one of the reasons why it's so important to watch the model move. Right? Drawing for life is not, is not always just drawing uh, people in pictures. Right? So watching the movement gives us so many hints. There's so many things that we can see when we're working from a live model that are different than just drawing from a photograph, right? Nothing wrong with drawing from a photograph, but most drawers will agree that when, 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 the, when it's available, or when a model is available, that is, that is the preferred way, right? Uh, the next one down is actually sort of the, the top of the pelvic form, which is a little bit difficult to see. So, it, so there's not really much here because there's a lot of muscle in here, but it's sort of approximately here, and then the, the fourth head comes to the bottom again of that gluteal fold as we talked about. Uh, can I flip you around again? Okay, so um, uh, actually, let's maybe turn that one, right? Right, so the next place, right, so in here you can see, uh, right? so there's that gluteal fold, right, and we see sort of how the, the relationship between the bottom of that, uh, uh, that fold right there and then the front of the groin. Now, the next thing, uh, maybe we can just come back to forward here. The, the next thing is we're going to be talking today about adding on the legs, right? So the legs, the legs are in relationship to the torso, right? This is pretty important, you know. So um, when with all the proportional relationships, right, whether we're talking about our head heights uh, or uh, or our facial proportions, they are always in relation relationship to ourselves right, or the, or to the particular model, not to other people, right? So if somebody uh, somebody uh, uh, perceives themselves as having long legs, their legs are being compared not to other people's legs, their, their legs are being compared to their torso. Right? So that's what makes someone look like they have long legs or short legs. Right? So there's a relationship here that we're really looking for. Right? And that relationship is the overall height from here to here in comparison to the overall height from here to where. Right? Where exactly, okay? So, so the legs from the bottom of the heel, right? now this can be confusing when you're drawing because the bottom of the heel is back here, but what you're seeing right, in the toe is, is up here. So it appears to be different, right? So you have to be, you have to be conscious of that. The bottom of the heel right, to the top of the greater trochanter. Right? So the greater trochanter is the, is the, the sort of the, uh, uh, the top of your femur, right? Uh, 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 past the, where the ball joint is. Right? So could you identify that in yourself? <laughs> yeah, dig a little, yeah, yeah, yeah see? see right, right there? And, and, and those of you at home, I want you to do the same thing. Now if you move your leg like this, right, you can notice that, that when you do this, right, that doesn't move, right? Because that's where your leg bone is coming up and coming down, right? We're always gonna wanna try to find this on an individual. And because um, it's a place where there's bone coming to the surface, uh, if, somebody's, if somebody's very, very thin, uh, the, the, the greater trochanter is gonna tend to pop out like a little bit of a bump. And because of the, the way that, uh, that body fat collects on us, uh, if somebody's a little bit more heavy set, we're gonna see it as a little bit of a dimple. 
right, that's in there. But it's almost always identifiable if you know what you're looking for, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an overall measurement, right, we're gonna use something like a knitting needle, this is what we'll be using, an right, uh, overall measurement, put your knitting needle on the top of, this on the top of her head, put your thumb at the bottom of the groin, and then compare that, this is a comparative measurement, right, something you should know from your introduction to drawing course, right, a comparative measurement from the bottom of the groin to the top of the head, and compare that to the distance from here to here, and you're going to find that that's going to sit right about here, right? Now the reason, so and that distance is going to be four heads. So we are four heads from the bottom. Oh, so we are four heads from the bottom of our heel to our greater trochanter, and we are four heads from the top of our head to the bottom of our groin. Now what you might notice in that is that there is about four inches of overlap. That four inches, right? Your a head is about eight inches. That four inches is a half a head. That's where we get seven and a half. So the joke in my class is always, you know, everybody knows that four plus four equals seven and a half. Right? That's, a, that's a figure drawing joke you can share with people, right? <laughs> Spread that out on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the internet, right? All right, so this is what you have to remember. Four plus four is seven and a half. Now this can work in any number of different ways. We're always gonna look for this relationship, even if the model is in a sitting pose. Right? Even if the model is in a sitting pose, uh, we're still gonna look to compare those two things. So if, uh, if, if we are in a sitting pose, uh, uh, out of the frame for a minute here. Okay, okay sit here for a second. So in a sitting pose here, right, I would still be doing the same thing. I would be comparing the distance from the top of her head to here, and then I would compare this up. And what I might find in a pose like this is that that overlap, right, maybe the bottom of her heels comes up to, uh, uh, to the top of her chest. Right? That's, a, that's the type of comparison that I'm going to always be looking for. Right? So uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna move on to doing uh, a, a demonstration for you at this point. Right, in that demonstration, I'm going to do a standing pose, but know that you can adapt the system to any, any pose and anything that you're drawing. All right? Thanks. Before we get started with the demonstration, I want to, I want to go over those proportions one more time, but I'm going to draw them out this time. All right? So, um, you know, all drawings, all drawings are going to really start out with a... Uh, um, with a rib cage form, right? So we're going to start out with that rib cage form. There's our ovoid rib cage form. I'm going to put a center line on that. Right? This does this type of uh, this this type of uh, approach to drawing uh, doesn't matter if we're drawing a uh, a really complex pose or we're drawing a uh, a really simple um, straightforward anatomical type pose. Right? So right, I'm going to put my rib cage uh, my my pelvic form on here. Right. And you can see that our pelvic form has a, you know, a couple different versions, right? So I can draw this kind of form here, where this portion down here represents the bottom of the groin, right? and then this portion here represents the sides of the pelvis. Right. Really, the, uh, the, the pelvic form comes in like this, and we're going to see these are going to be the, um, the top of the femur. Right, and the greater trochanter. So this is going to be that mark that we're going to look at. So that's going to be our that little bit of overlap. Right? You put a head form on here. Right? It's always going to start the same. Circular form for a cranial mass. And then jaw form down to kind of conclude that. Right? Right? So just quickly sketch those forms out. Right now I'm going to go and I'm going to check. Right? I'm going to check my uh, my measurements in order to make sure that this head is. Uh, that this torso is four heads high. Right? One, there's two. Okay, now I can take those two plus two. You can see I'm actually a little bit, uh, um, I'm a little bit too, uh, too large here, right? So I need this to be up a little bit higher, right? So maybe what I need to do is bring my jaw up a little bit more. Right? Maybe that means that that head is just a little bit too big. One, one, two, right, and then those two plus that equals there, and then that's the bottom of my groin right there. Right? Okay. 
So that becomes those four heads. Now, this is the place where it's particularly important, right? This is just a, a loose, quick sort of sketch representing the four heads of the torso. So there's one, two, and then of those two, our navel would sit about here, which puts our aces points down about here, and then across, and there's four. All right, so one, two, three, four. All right, now remember, uh, as we're looking at these here, this is in the anatomical position. Right? If, the, mo uh, if the, the model and the pose that we're doing was to tilt uh, the head down, right, then this would change. It wouldn't be four heads anymore. Right? It's four heads because it's stretched out because these are the proportions. Right? So these become the things that we measure off of. However, um, we're looking for uh, the variations and the deviations. Right? <clears throat> okay, so now to get the overall leg. And this is, this is the part that's really, really important. Right? Really, really important. Right? I'm going to measure my overall um, uh, torso height. Right? And then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to compare. So this is going to be, uh, so if this were our pelvic form here, these would be the asis points. We're going to talk, we'll talk more about this. Right? Right? Our, our, our pelvis would sit something like this. The greater trochanter, right? which would be, this would be our hip bone. Right? It would sit something like this. Right? And then that leg is going to come down something like that. Right? How far down does it go? Right? It's going to go this same distance. Flip that around, and that's going to tell me that the bottom of my feet should sit about there. Okay? All right, so now I can then take this. Right? We know that half of this right, is going to give us uh, half of the leg. All right? So uh, when, you, uh, when you sit, right, um, let's see, let's see if we kind of draw our, oh, maybe we'll, we'll draw our pelvis from the side here, like side here like this right? Right? and then this might come down something like this so the same height right? so this would be like that that gives us from the side right? now if we were to take this bone here right? Right? and bring that out right? my two heads like this would go out here, right? Those would come out something like this if they were coming up. Right? That would give us a kneecap that would sit like, like this. And that bone's gonna sit something up like this as it comes down and it widens out. Right? And then our tibia would sit going back in this direction. And it would then come back underneath like that. Right? And it would be that same distance if it was folded like that. Right? Well, our, our kneecap would come down something like this. Right? And then our foot might sit on here, like something like this. And it might come down. Right? Right? You can see how that, and you can see that this distance is the same as that distance. Right? Okay, so uh, I'm going to do that same thing here. Right? And that brings us down to there. So our leg bone on this side is going to look something like this. It widens out a little bit. It comes down something like that. And there's a little kneecap that sits on the top of it. Right? About halfway is where our tibia will go. Right? And that's going to come down to here. And then we'll have our, this will be our calcaneus. And then the rest of our sort of foot coming down here, something like that. All right. second bone, which is going to come something like that. Right? And that's going to give us then our overall proportions. All right? I'm going to put a little sort of thing for this on here. Right? Arm bone, second arm bone, hands, hands are going to go down. All right? So these proportions here then sit like this, one, two, here, here, all right, four, 
plus 4 equals 7.5. Okay? All right, so there's our uh, 4 plus 4 equals 7.5. That's the answer to that's the answer to the final for drawing two. Okay? All right. Uh, uh, I'm gonna get a fresh piece of paper and uh, and we'll set up and we're gonna do a longer, uh, a little bit longer pose drawing. To show you how to do this without sort of silly skeletal forms. All right, so let's jump into this first pose. Right, we're gonna we're gonna first analyze it a little bit, take a look at what's going on, uh, and uh, and then I'm gonna draw it. And keep in mind that the end goal of this assignment or this uh, um, this drawing. Uh, or the drawings that you're going to do is about proportional accuracy, right? So um, it's not about um, you know drawing her fingernails or her her eyebrows uh, or getting distracted by any of the tattoos or anything like that. Right? I'm, I'm not interested in seeing any of that stuff. I'm just interested in proportional accuracy. All right. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do, just as I start out all drawings, right? right? Uh, or I shouldn't say all, but you know. As I start out all the drawings that we're going to be doing, all right, I'm going to pose like this. I'm going to start out with that ovoid form. Right? I'm going to find that rib cage form. Right? Got a little crazy over here on the side, so I'm going to pull that out. Right? <clears throat> Notice how I, I leaned it a little bit. Right? See, it leans back a little bit. Right? It might be hard to see because the camera angle is a smidge a bit different. Right? I leaned it a little bit because I'm looking at, uh, for the most part, her chest is facing towards me, right? which puts my center line in coming down something like this, right? right? I'm gonna hold up a, a, a knitting needle here and measure that, right? And I can bring that back over, right? And look at that angle and bring that back over and it's like this, right? It's not like this, it's not straight up and down because she's got some curvature, right? I know that because that one hip, right, is gonna, this is gonna bend then and this hip is going to move uh, up because all of her weight is on Right? Uh, all of her weight is on her right hip, right? That's the one that her, she has her hand on, right? And because all that weight is on that one hip and that uh, right leg, which is her dominant leg, is straight, right? Um, her left hip is dropping down. And dropping down, it's going to create uh, that I-beam type shape that looks something like this. Uh, you can measure, uh, it's easy to see the ACES points on Chandra because of the tattoo that's right there. So uh, on either side, uh, a little bit above her right uh, um, index finger is where her ACES point is. So I'm kind of measuring across that, right? And that gives me this line right here. Right? And then this one is coming up. Um, I'm a little bit over exaggerating that one because uh, this collarbone is going straight, but then this one is actually lifting up. We'll get that kind of going in a few minutes. All right, I'm going to get that square box shape kind of going. I'm going to take a comparative measurement. This is one side to the other. All right, this does not sit evenly. All right, so I'm seeing more uh, of the distance from uh, the, where the center of the groin is. I'm seeing more on this side and less on this side. More on this side and less on this side. Right. I'm going to go in. I'm going to take some comparative measurements in a little bit and sort of get those. But right now, I'm just trying to get my overall four heads to be correct. Right. So I just started out by loosely kind of sketching those things out, not applying anything else. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab my head measurement. All right. And I'm going to measure that. Sorry, I was cutting some wood before I have sawdust all over me. <laughs> One, two, just a little bit above. All right, so get that there. Sketch out my head. And before I go to place my head, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a straight line up. Right, it sits a little bit here. Right, I'm lining that up with with the point down here. Front of the head, it doesn't seem like this. So the front sits about here. I think it's going to give me my cranial mass here, like this. 
and then her head tilts just a little bit. That's how I'm holding that, that knitting needle, right? So that, that tilts just a little bit, and uh, her jaw form comes down to about here. Right? You might see that kind of up. I gotta see through that COVID mask, right? I gotta see through all of that hair as well. So it's looking something like that, All right? So now I'm gonna go back to my measurements, right? It was one and then two down to here. And I actually had a little bit of overlap on these two heads here, right? Something like that. This one sat to sort of like the top of the rest. So her head, because the chin is down, she's actually technically, I guess, about three and a half heads high. All right? So I could count that a couple of different ways. So I could go one, two, three, and then about a half, yeah. So I could go one, two, three, right? and then a little bit more than half. Right? And so that's gonna give me that sort of overall height. Uh, before I go too farther on this, uh, when I was drawing the skeleton, this wasn't really kind of as important, but I'm gonna get an overall width now. And right? I wanna make sure that my widths are correct. Right? So uh, I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna measure my head height. Right, and I'm measuring from here to here. I'm not measuring the width of my head, I'm, measuring, I'm using my head height. Right? Right? And this is about three quarters, is about a head. And that actually looks pretty good. Let's take an overall head width on that. There's that. That comes to about here. And so again, you can see I'm getting those accurate measurements. Right. Uh, I'm going to sort of back that up with an angle measurement from the head down to the hip. Oh, it's hard without blocking the camera. Right. Angle. Right. Go down something like that. Right. And I'm going to check from the angle down to the widest part of the hip on this side. Same thing, getting an angle coming down like that. Right, so see how I'm using this side here, I'm measuring an angle here and measure it here. Right? And that gives me a nice sense that the overall width of my figure is correct. A little bit more than a head on the rib cage. A little bit more. A right? little bit more than the head on the rib cage. Alright, so I think that looks pretty nice. Right? Uh, really I will come back to the arms. Right? I will come back to the arms. Well, maybe we'll do something like this just to make it look a little bit more what you're seeing. Yeah, take an angle off there, and that shoulder is going to sit about there. Um, and then I will come back and do this. Uh, um, we've got some hair kind of going in the way. i got to see through some of that. Uh, I will uh, dig into that a little bit in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now I have my four heads on it. And notice I'm not doing the lines across. Right? That, was, that was something I did when I was just um, uh, demoing out the proportion system. I don't want to put like all these crazy lines on this and make the drawing look silly. Right? Now I'm going to take an overall measurement. Right? So what's most important in drawing a leg or a limb for me right, is that I always like to know where it is that I'm going. Right? So when I draw um, an arm, uh, I would draw, when I draw this arm, uh, um, most likely, I will draw the hand down here first, and then I will plot where the elbow is, and then I will just connect the pieces. Right? It's really easy. It's just you know, you know, I want to. Um, I'm, you know, I'm I'm in New York City. I want to get to Los Angeles. Right? So you know, you know that you get on a train going, and, and you know the direction. Right? If you don't know uh, that you want to get to Los Angeles, you just randomly want to go start going west. You might end up in Seattle. Right? But you wanted to go to Los Angeles, right? I actually prefer San Diego, but that's just me. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take that overall height, right? So I'm going to go from, my thumb is on the groin. Right? The top of my knitting needle is on the top of her head. Right? Go down to that heel. And for me, it sits kind of just... Right, her navel is kind of about here, right? It's gonna sit about there. So now I'm gonna come here, right? I'm gonna come down 
here, and this is where her, her, her heel goes. Right? So now I, have a, I, I know where I'm going. Right? Now I just need to find out you know, where exactly. Uh, I'm just going to match that with, a, uh, um, with an angle measurement. Right? That inside of that heel sits right below the groin. Right? So straight up and down inside of our heel right, is sitting right there. Right? Now I'll be able to sort of just sort of connect this sort of big sort of form here. Right? We'll be able to come and draw this out, something like that, and we will get our leg length. Right? So let's go ahead and, uh, and do that. Right? I'm going to check that measurement just one more time, just to be sure. Right? I like to check things, especially on big important stuff. Foot something like that. Sit something like this. All right. So now I'm just gonna squint my eyes a little bit and kind of look in. Right. My heels come something like this. Right. I get an angle coming something like this. Right. These go back sort of this way. Comes up a little bit. Right. Comes in. We've got a sort of second sort of portion of. Foot shape is you know, that's kind of our overall kind of foot shape right there. Right? That angle. <clears throat> Measure that. All right, uh, so now coming up to the top of the knee. Right. So I'm put the top of our knee kind of about here. Right. Yeah, squindle that I should be wearing. his hip. Right. Let's go create a co-canter. Right. That, that hip actually kind of comes out a little bit wider. Right. He's going to kind of come in something like this. And then we get that leg looking something like that. Alright. Let's go right there. Coming to the other leg, all right. So that other leg, right, I'm gonna do that same thing. All right, I'm gonna try to plot where that heel is. All right, I guess I'm gonna actually come off of this one and say that it heel starts kind of about there, and then it comes out on an angle, something like this. shape there. Shape. We can actually measure the total distance on that foot to the little bit more to the head. It's kind of giving me my other sort of foot 
curl, we're going to sit something like that. And the form kind of goes out and then over. And then in our toe, we're actually going to kind of come up something like this. And then we've got our sort of heel sitting off something like that. And then we'll kind of do the top of our foot, something like this. All right, so then, uh, you know, just sort of plot a couple of points off of this really quick. All right, so in my upside knee here, I'm getting a distance that's about something like that. So that's not as if my knee comes out about that far. And there's your inside distance, get a little bit of that negative space. It goes up to about the eye. It's giving me something about kind of there. All right, now I can measure an angle. All right. A couple of different things I could do. I can measure a height kind of up here in order to figure out where that knee kind of placement is. Um, I could also, uh, um, and maybe I'll just go with the height to where that angle change is coming back up. Right, that sits about kind of there, and that's telling me that that needs to be just a little bit higher. Right, that's where that transition happens. Right, and I have an angle coming back on that that's lining up pretty nicely. Right, something like that. And then she's going to put the inside one. Right, and maybe a little bit more like that. Maybe a little bit more. Right, and then we're going to have this one coming down. Right, that's an interesting sort of shape there. It appears to be a straight line, but it's really not. It actually comes in like this, right, and then it comes out like that. And we're going to get the other one kind of going something like this. Right. A little bit of overlap here, right? so we can kind of make some adjustments to that. I feel like that one's a little bit too thick. And bring that kind of down there. Bring this kind of hip up out a little bit more so we feel like they work a little bit better together. And then something like that. All right. This knee appears to be a little bit thinner. Notice I, I, I like to keep my, my marks kind of, when I'm drawing at least, I like to keep my marks kind of light and loose until I kind of find the shape. You know, maybe that's sort of my sort of background as a sculptor. And I, I have a tendency to want to, uh, I, I kind of, um, I overbuild my forms as a sculptor. Uh, I overbuild my forms a little bit and then rake down to make those sort of final commitments. All right? So I like to, make those final commitments and sort of the end of the drawing, right? So right now, really my primary concern is kind of just getting the overall proportions all correct. Right? And I will come back in in the end and, and, and commit to the various sort of lines that I want to be there. Mm -hmm. So I said that I would go into this, uh, um, into this hand first, right? So uh, now coming off of sort of the navel here, right? I'm going to plot an angle down for this hand. Right, and it's going to sit sort of out here. Right, there's a kind of square box shape that we're looking at here for the hand. Right, that's just sort of something as simple as this. Right, the top finger comes up and then goes something like that. Right, and then the bottom ones are a grouping. We'll talk more about sort of hands uh, and, uh, and sort of placing various things here. So here's sort of my sort of kind of sort of quick sort of indication of the hands. I don't wanna get a little bit of sort of stuff in here. I don't wanna imply any tone at this point in time because I'm trying to stay purely structural, right? And we're not really seeing any of her, um, her thumb forms, right? So that gives us that sort of outside. So there we have that little hand sticking out there, right? Now I can go up and I can plot, right? I have the, this section right here, which goes like this, and then this goes like this, right? And I can plot my elbow back from that. Right, so I'm getting something that sits sort of something like here. All right, and I know it comes on an angle off of this. Right, so that's gonna give me something that's gonna be a little bit higher. Right, something quick like that. And something like that. Angle from my shoulder. Actually, that looks pretty good. Let me bring that shoulder out a little bit more. I'm going to kick that out this way, right, and then we get a little bit of sort of bicep kind of going here, and then our pectoral coming and sitting somewhere like here. All right. I think 
Go ahead and draw the breasts on this side. Bottom of the breasts sits kind of about here. So we'll put that, that form there. Right, and then it kind of comes up like this. We have pit of the neck, kind of that heart shape. And because that other arm is raised, the other nipple sits a little bit higher. And then inside the body though, something like this. touch each other. And then sort of sitting like this. All right. And demo, and this is the head of the bed, just a little bit there. And get those kind of going down. All right. Let's go back up and uh, um, same kind of thing. Maybe we have to just kind of imagine where our hand is here. Right? All we really have is the elbow. So, you know, from where the eyes should be sitting here, right? right? The eyes are sitting from the highest point of the eye is the elbow sits just a little bit above that, which is going to be something like this, right? The farthest point of the elbow sits inside of the knee. Right? So if I illustrate on it, it's, it's inside of the knee but it's farther out than the rib cage, right? So it sits in, right in this sort of in-between spot, right? Sort of about there, right? So that gives us kind of approximately where that elbow is, right? Now I'm just gonna, the high point of it sits kind of something like this, right? So I could just make an angle, so something like this, right? And then it kind of comes down, something like this, Right, and I'll squint a little bit, right, so they come right about here. Right, and then we get some sort of overlap. I'll squint a little bit. our arm. Right. Put some of the hair in here. I want to put the, all my drawings that I'm doing this semester, uh, I'm putting these little COVID masks on because I feel like when I look back, right, just as these drawings are my sort of notes about sort of what's going on, I feel, I feel like uh, whenever you see a drawing of a model wearing a mask, you're automatically going to know, oh, that was done in 2020 or 2021. Mm -hmm. We'll go with some hair now. And we can kind of be a little bit maybe more stylized on these sections. Let's bring that kind of around here. We've got this kind of goes up. Mm -hmm. I want this to round a little out more up. And it comes down as a sharp down. Down something like this. It's going to go a little bit more. Some of the hair is going back behind her here. Some of it is rounding around and giving us a little bit of shape in the arm. Comes down, rounds over the top of the chest here. And it goes down in between. It kind of points towards the navel here. And these sections go to something like this. And give it a little bit more curvature. And give it a little bit more curvature.
so uh, uh, there we have it. Uh, that's a uh, um, you know standard. You know, I'm not sure exactly how long I talk. Uh, I took. Uh, I kind of talked through it, so it slows it down. Um, you know, this would be a sort of uh, you know 15 to 20 minute kind of uh, lay in drawing. Uh, this is also at a nice point. Uh, um, I wouldn't have gone through and kind of outlined the sort of sections um, that uh, I did uh, if I was planning to go in and tone the drawing, but can to, just to for the sake of sort of demo and everything, uh, I kind of wanted to sort of add some of that sort of stuff back in there. All right, so you can see I'm having a hard time. I keep on, you know, just like you guys, right? Just like you guys, all right? I'm gonna want to kind of keep on sort of playing around with it. You know, and there's a point when you gotta just sort of stop, all right? So um, uh, uh, that's my demonstration of how to do it. Uh, the things that are most important to me, just to reiterate, are that our, our, our figure is, approx our, is, is four, uh, four heads high in the torso and four heads high in the leg. And what we end up with is a seven and a half head figure whose body ap appears to be proportionate with their, uh, with their legs, okay? Uh, look forward to seeing you and your drawings uh, next week. Uh, talk to you then.